Okay, okay. Hi guys. Um, so I hope you guys have checked out my other tutorials. Um, if you haven't seen those, this tutorial is going to be a bit complicated. So maybe just try and watch the uh, intro to Maya because that'll give you some kind of basics on how to run uh, through the program. Um, but today I kind of want to show you how to make a pretty simple object, which is this dice right here. So um, I created this a while ago. Um, I wrote down the instructions for it. Of course, it's not perfect, um, but I'm always kind of open to criticism. So if you guys see any flaws in it, if you want to make it better, if you guys think I could have done it better at the end of this video, let me know. Um, I'm totally open to that, totally open to suggestions. But um, I'm just gonna run you through kind of how I created this and you can totally take a, a spin on it if you wanna make it cooler, if you wanna make it simpler, do that. Um, but I'll just run you through kind of how I made this object. So go ahead, make a new scene if you don't have one already. What I'm gonna be doing, um, I work on a black screen, you don't have to do that. <laughs> um, but I'll actually, here, I'll work on, I'll work on the standard blue for you guys. What I did first is I went ahead and just created a, um, just create a cube. And that cube, we're going to change the dimensions a little bit. I usually make my cube, um, just a bit bigger because I think that it, it, you can see it a lot more when, uh, objects are bigger. So, um... I did a 10 by 10 by 10. You don't have to at all, but feel free. Um, if you want to make it smaller, go ahead. And then I did six divisions on each because I basically figured out that in order to make each of those circles uh, that go into the dice, you need four faces. So this is going to be a circle right here, and then this would be another circle. So whatever size you make your dice, just remember that in order to make a good looking circle, you need four faces. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind. Okay, so now that we have our cube, as you can see, it's not on the ground, which really bugs me. So go ahead, if you're not in object mode, go in object mode. I made my height 10. So in the Y value, you're going to need to put in five so that it's sitting on the ground. It's basically just half of whatever your height is. So um, yeah, just keep that in mind whenever you're doing an absolute transform. Okay, so next what we're gonna be doing is just making the circles. So click Q and then go into your, uh, click your right uh, button on your mouse and go into face mode. Hold tab and select these middle guys right here. This is gonna be our one. So next what you can go ahead and do is do extrude. So remember, extrude is command E or control E. And then you're going to want to offset it by 0.5. And then when you're done with that, go up here to edit mesh and click on circularize. So as you can see, mine gets a weird twist to it. And I found that if you put in, um, my number happens to be 45, that'll make it even. But just experiment with what yours needs to be uh, straight, basically. And then um, go ahead and just do extrude again and you're going to offset it by let's say like 0.1 just small and then extrude it again and then you're gonna push it in let's say like 0.2 maybe or 0.3 negative 0.2 that looks pretty good if you do subs, you can see how it looks and see if you like it. If you want to push it in more, feel free. I think mine needs to go in a little bit more, so I'm going to do negative 0.3 instead. Yeah, okay, I like the look of that a little bit more. Okay, so that's basically our one. Looks pretty good. So now if we go over here, let's say we put like one on the top. If we go over here, then this side should basically be the two. So go ahead and select these guys and these guys to make our two. And then go ahead and extrude, command E, push them in, 0.5. Circularize it in the edit mesh. Change your twist to be straight. And then extrude again. If your extrude button doesn't work, just click over here like off of your object and try control E again. Sometimes mine does that too. Um, push it in 0.1, extrude again, 
and change the local translate z to negative 0.3 or just whatever number you figured out. The key is just be consistent, so no matter what you do, just try and be consistent with it. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and make this guy the 3. So we've got 1, 2, and then this will be 3. So go ahead and select the row going uh, diagonally across, extrude it, do 0.5, circularize it, change the twist, go ahead and extrude again, offset it by 0.1, extrude again, and push it in negative 0.3. All right, so now we've got three faces of our uh, dice. Looks pretty good so far. And um, next we're gonna be doing the four and the five and the six. That's where it gets a little more complicated because that's when the faces start um, being next to each other, especially for the six. First, let's just start with the four. So the four is gonna be um, over on I believe this side is the four, I believe. I know that the six is on the other side of the one. So this should be the six. So um, maybe we'll make this the four. Honestly, it doesn't really matter. If you have a reference, that works really well. If not, just do what I do. All right, so we pick the four corners, extrude it, 0.5, circularize it, so close. Circularize it, change the twist, extrude again, 0.1, extrude again, negative 0.3. All right, we got our four, looks pretty good. And then this will be our five, so you can just, the five is like a X, like that extrude, offset it by 0.5, circularize those, change the twist, extrude again. Also, if your twist uh, doesn't happen and yours looks completely normal, then you don't need to change the twist. I'm just making sure that mine all um, look the same. Okay, so our last one is going to be the six here. So with this six, it's a little weird because you cannot, or you can, it, it'll mess it up, but you can. You can't extrude like that. Because if you select all of these and extrude them and offset them, it makes them all one, which we don't want to do. So what you have to do is you actually have to do like more like one at a time. So what I did is I did the corners first and then I did the middles. But it's up to you whichever way you want to do it. Point one, then extrude negative point three. All right, and now let's go ahead and do those middle guys. Same exact process. We're just, it's super, super simple, but it's just a little tedious. And that's kind of just how modeling is. <laughs> it can get really simple. It can also be really hard, but it gets tedious. All right, so that looks like our last one. All right, looks good. So now we got all of our circles in, which is awesome. So if you press three, you can see that it looks a little wonky. And that's because um, those edges aren't beveled. So having beveled edges is really important. Beveled edges is kind of like having a buffer on your edge so that you don't have 90 degrees hitting each other. You don't have a 90 degree angle here. So you don't have two planes hitting each other directly. So um, there's a couple ways to achieve that. Um, I haven't found a super like simple one for this dice. It gets a little complicated. What I thought could work is if you just select this edge and then do control B for bevel, like we did in the previous one, and then just do two segments at like a 0.5. But I think that when I do that on all of them, it gets a little, um, gets a little weird. So let's just try that method. If it does not work, then I've got a backup method that takes a little bit more time. 
Um, but yeah, so just select this whole edge basically of like the face. Make sure you get all the um, edges. So it's one full square. And then do control B for bevel and then do two segments so that you have like a three edge rule. Actually, you could probably do one segment and it would look fine too. Totally up to you. Um, okay, that looks pretty good. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do this one now. I think this should work. It looks pretty good so far, so that's good. Um, but yeah, if you guys are ever confused on any part or you're like, Katie, why did you do this? What's going on? Totally feel free to ask me. Um, I'm open to criticism if you have any. I'm not, I'm not super sensitive about that. So if you do have any crazy questions, um, feel free to let me know. Okay, I think that's looking okay. I'm gonna keep going. Um, if I mess up, I'll tell you to stop. <laughs> but yeah, I'm fairly new to modeling, so um, if you ever see anything that you're like, Katie, there's a better way to do this, or um, you're making it too complicated, let me know. Um, I love to learn easier methods to do anything, so if you have those, please feel free to share. Um, if not, I totally understand that as well. Um, okay, that's a little odd. A little weird that it's not beveling that edge correctly. Oh, that looks weird. Oh, that's why. Okay, so here's an issue. So this basically happened because I selected an edge. I'm just undoing stuff. I basically selected an edge without realizing it and then beveled it, which I didn't want to do. What I think I might try to do is um there it is so see how i accidentally selected that not good make sure that when you are selecting those kinds of things you be really careful okay so i basically undoed all the way where i only had one face beveled so we're back at the beginning kind of we did one face um so now i'm gonna try and not select any faces that i do not want beveled that's really important um because you don't need to bevel an edge twice, and if you do, it, it can mess up your mesh. So, okay, that looks better. Um, oh, there's my issue. Okay, so, by the way, I'm just using like shift and uh, control. Those will like get rid of your selections. Shift will like grow it, control will, will uh, lessen it, things like that. Um, okay, beveled it, gave it two segments. Okay, I think that's looking better. Doesn't look like it messed up anywhere. That's that's good. Okay, I'm going to keep going. So this one's got these guys. I'm just holding shift to grow the selection. What I could try and do is do all of the edges that I have not done yet. Okay, I don't want that. So just make sure to not select those guys. Oh, okay, be really careful about that. I think I accidentally probably beveled an edge back here by doing that. Let's check. Hmm. All right, do you see that right there? That is me accidentally beveling the inside of an edge. So be really careful um, when you bevel anything. You want to be careful not to select those guys. See how this guy is selected currently? You want to take him away. So do control to get rid of him. Okay, I'm actually, I'm going to try to select more than one face and see if it lets me bevel it. Because that will make this job a lot easier if we can just do that. Um, if not, then we'll do it one at a time. But... Sometimes you just have to work with your program and not necessarily with what you want to work, so. Okay, let's get rid of these guys. Let's try that. I'm also hoping to dabble a little bit in um, character animation and um, modeling those kinds of things. So, like, if you guys have any recommendations for videos I should check out, um, or people who, you know, have great tutorials or something, I'd love to see those. 
Um, I'm going to be doing really simple objects since I have not gotten the chance to dabble in any of those uh, areas, but I'd, I'd love to if you guys, you know, have any suggestions. Okay, so I basically went through and beveled all the edges at once. It worked for me. If it does not work for you, just go ahead and do them one at a time. Make sure you just give each of them two segments, um, that kind of thing. You should be good. You're just trying to get, give yourself more edges right here. So see how we have three edges? We generally want to do that. So generally try and keep your three edge rule at all times when modeling. Okay, so if you press three, you can go ahead and see how your object's doing. If we put it in object mode. Kind of just like feel it out, look for any like odd places in the mesh. Um, I would say that right here would be a problem spot. I don't really like how that looks, but that's because I did two different bevels. It doesn't look terrible, but you could go back and fix it. Um, yeah, I'd say I'm pretty happy with how it's looking besides this little, little blip here. Um, other than that, I think you guys should be able to, to, um, create this along with me. If you guys are running into any uh, problems, let me know. Um, but I think I'm going to conclude it. It looks good. I'm, I might do another uh, video about texturing this and painting this in Substance Painter since I just bought Substance Painter and I absolutely adore it. So let me know if you guys want to see that. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys thought of the tutorial. If it helped you, Send me your models if anything goes crazy wrong. And um, yeah, subscribe, like the video if you uh, had some fun along with me. And I'll see you next time. Bye guys.